Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, what a great groove. How you doing everybody? Nick D. Virgilio here and welcome back to Groovy Thursdays. We made it all the way to groove number 16 in our Groovy Thursdays hang and I've got a great one for you this week. The song is called What Gorilla. Now not What Gorilla, W-H-A-T, but What, W-O-T Gorilla. Why they named it that, I have no idea. <laughs> From the Genesis record, Wind and Wuthering, originally played by the amazing Phil Collins. There's a lot going on in this one bar groove. It's fast and energetic. It's a great practice tool for your ghost notes because your hands are always moving. It's got a fat backbeat, and the hi-hat part works really well orchestrated around the drum kit to different surfaces. The record Wind and Weathering came out back in 1976, and Phil was playing a lot of fusion music with his band Brand X, and with Genesis, they were making a lot of fun and very inventive progressive rock. In fact, Phil's drumming is fantastic on this record, from fast and funky grooves like this one to more mellow and simple grooves like on the song Afterglow. This record, like so many others during that period, shows the incredible skill that Phil had on the drums. There's an amazing little video on YouTube I found where Phil plays this groove, and I've put the link for that little snippet, the link for it, in the description here of this video. You gotta check it out. Um, it must be an interview of some kind. It looks like it's maybe in, from the 80s and maybe it's from South America somewhere. I'm not sure. If any of you maybe have that video or have the link to the full video, please post it up because I'd love to check out what else is on there. But this little thing, he gets asked, I guess, about the groove from Wat Gorilla. And he goes, oh yeah, it comes from this thing. And he plays the groove and it is absolutely mind-blowing. Just watch his wrists move. You know, he played really low on his snare drum and hi-hat, but his wrists are moving, it's just like butter. Smooth as silk, you hear every note, and when he snaps the backbeat, it's just pow. But he looks like it's just barely moving. It's really cool to see, and you should check it out if you can. Let me quickly mention, if you dig what's going on here at Groovy Thursdays, that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with all your friends, bring on the comments and all the great suggestions for future grooves, and with that said, let's get on to the groove of Watt Gorilla. Like I mentioned earlier, this groove is just one bar long and repeats through most of the song. The changes come where you fill into the transition between sections, and you can tell where that transition is because the synthesizer plays the main melody there. It's the same thing that happens at the top of the song when the band first comes in after the drums have been grooving for a little while. The groove's in 4-4 time and right around 170 BPM. That's where I tapped it out on my metronome, but you can take it up and down a few clicks if you like. The groove may sound a little deceiving because the very first beat isn't the downbeat of the groove, it's actually the upbeat, the anticipation of the downbeat. But before we get into that, let's first go through the snare drum and what that's playing. If you strip everything away and you look where the accented backbeat falls, it's on beat three of the bar. So it's actually a halftime groove. Once you fill in the rest of the bar with all of the other notes, that's when it starts feeling really energetic. But the backbeat is just a simple accent on beat three. Now, let's look at what the hi-hat and the snare drum are doing together. They're playing all of the 16th notes of the bar, except for one. The hi-hat plays the first and third 16th note, like your basic eighth notes if you're playing a regular eighth note groove. The snare drum plays the second and fourth 16th notes, the in-between notes, so you're just going back and forth between the hands. The only time where the hi-hat and the snare, the hands play together, is on that accent on beat number three, and then it's immediately followed by a ghost note in your left hand, in your snare hand. It's one of those things that's pretty common, really. You play the accent with your snare hand and then let the stick rebound and play the other note. And if you let it happen, it'll do it automatically. Now let's get into the kick drum pattern. The first kick drum falls on the four and the anticipation right before the downbeat, okay? The last eighth note before the downbeat. The next kick drum falls on beat one and, then you have a double starting on two and, and you play the last two 16th notes of beat number two with your kick drum, immediately followed by the backbeat, the accented snare drum on beat number three. Let me sing it out for you. Here's our pulse. One, two, three, four, just like that. Now I'll sing the kick drum and the snare drum, the accented backbeat. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Uh, uh, do good that. Uh, uh, do good that. Uh, uh, do good that. Uh, uh, do good now let me see if I can sing it out for you where I sing out the beat names. This is a little bit harder, but I think I can do it. Here's our pulse. One, two, three, four, just like that. Here we go. One, two, three, four, 
and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and whoo I did it. <laughs> a simple way to start playing this groove is to just play the kick and snare, the kick pattern and that backbeat snare over and over again before adding the hi-hat or any of the filler ghost notes. A couple more things to point out. The only time the snare drum does not play a ghost note is on the second note of the kick drum double, the last 16th note of beat number two. And I think you'll notice that once you start playing this groove and you add that double in, it's sort of like a natural thing where your hand doesn't play the ghost note right there. It just sort of knows not to play it at that point. I guess you could practice it where you do play the double, but I think that'll change the groove and the feel. So just make it a natural flowing thing. And I think you'll notice that your left hand will just leave that ghost note out. The next thing to point out is all of the other ghost notes, the rest of the notes in the pattern you're gonna play with your snare hand. You're just going back and forth with your hands playing single strokes. For me, it's just right, left, right, left, back and forth. Think of it as a single stroke roll, just on the hi-hat and the snare drum. And like I mentioned just a second ago, you play every 16th note except that one on the double kick drum. And the last thing I wanna point out here is the other sound that makes this groove so exciting and energetic, and that's the opening and closing of the hi-hats. They open and close with those upbeat kick drums, not on the double, the upbeat kick drums, and then the accented snare on beat three. The special sauce, or the ear candy, if you want to call it that, is how the hi-hat opens. We're getting really specific here. How the hi-hat opens on that accented snare drum on beat three. You leave it open a little bit longer than the open hi-hats with the kick drums. Those, you play really fast and sharp. But on that beat three, on that accented snare drum, leave it open a little bit longer, a little bit washier, and it really makes the groove percolate and have a ton of energy. In the transcription I wrote, I play the groove for eight bars, and then I do a little fill at the end of bar eight, going into some kicks and some crashes, similar to what Phil does on the record. He's playing along with the synth melody that comes in during those transitions, and it's pretty similar every time it comes around. Unless you're interested in learning the whole song, I would say for those two bars, do whatever you want, just as long as you get to that anticipated kick drum right before the downbeat to get you back into the groove again. The next thing to do once you get this groove pretty solid is to move what you play on the hi-hat to some other sound source around the kit, like your china cymbal or your ride cymbal. I play the groove on my stack cymbal, which sounds really cool, but you can try playing that hi-hat pattern on the rim of your tom or even a cowbell. Anything like that would sound really cool with this groove. And there you go, another fantastic groove from Phil Collins. The song is Watt Gorilla, W-O-T Gorilla, from the Genesis record, Wind and Wuthering. And I get the feeling, I get the feeling I'm going to be doing a lot more Phil Collins grooves in our Groovy Thursdays hangs as time goes on because there's so many great ones to choose from. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you all here next week on Groovy Thursdays for groove number 17. Cheers, everybody.